All right. Good good uh, day, everybody, and an early happy holidays to you. I'm Tim Letta from Till Payments, and uh, welcome to another edition of our Till Partners Showcase. And today we're featuring our, our good friends and partners at Gratify. Uh, Gratify is unique in the buy now, pay later space. They're a Vancouver-based organization, and they're able to support, support our partners in both the United States and Canada. And uh, their mission is to enable the buying power of your customers and generate more revenue for us all. And uh, one of the unique things about Gratify is they are not beholden or bring a, a third party finance company to the table. They uh, enable you as a partner to uh, control your own destiny and, and decision clients uh, independent of uh, third party banks. So with that, I would like to introduce <clears throat> the CEO and founder of Gratify, Ryan Brow. Great. Thank you so much, Tim. And uh, great to be on the call with everybody here. Um, so it's, uh, as Tim mentioned, um, here at Gratify, we're really focused on uh, embedded buy now, pay later and, and embedded finance. Um, and I'll give you a little bit of background about myself. Uh, as you can tell by my accent, I'm not from North America. Uh, so I'm uh, from Australia and uh, came up through the payments ecosystem there, um, which was uh, over the last kind of seven to 10 years, was highly fragmented by buy now, pay later. And so, um, you know, the juggernauts coming out of that market uh, have entered into the US market as well. So brands like Afterpay uh, and Zip, and obviously there's homegrown like a firm uh, as well. Um, and what we're seeing is now uh, this consumer demand for uh, buy now, pay later at the smaller ticket size and embedded finance and embedded credit uh, at the larger ticket size. Um, as Tim mentioned, uh, we're based here in Vancouver, uh, in Canada. Um, all of our staff are based uh, based here, um, but we have um, uh, a couple of those folks on the call today uh, with uh, Luke Ramsey and uh, Melina Wiedering. Uh, so, um, Melina, over to you for a quick intro. Hi, so my name is Melina, and I'm the Director of Partnerships. been with Gratify for just over four months now and have had a long history in payments. Um, and I'm very happy to be with Gratify. One of the things that really drew me to this company is how different Gratify is from other uh, some of the other buy now pay laters. And I'm sure Ryan's going to get into that in the presentation. So it's nice to be here. Over to Luke. Morning, everyone. Uh, or afternoon, depending on where you are. Uh, Luke Ramsey, uh, Director of Activations. So sort of I, I, I've been with Gratify ooh, over two years now. Um, and uh, sort of I work hand in hand with uh, with Ryan and Melina when it comes to going to market and getting, uh, you know, really working with our partners to help them have the best chance of success in terms of converting their merchants. So looking forward to working with you guys. Great. Thanks both. Uh, if we can, uh, let's kick over into the next slide. Uh, here we are. So um, when we think about uh, installment plans, uh, you know, and and buy now, pay later. And if we really strip it back, we're talking about a recurring payment for the consumer to get access to something today and pay it off over time. And what this does is when we when we approach this from a, uh, the three pillars of uh, payments, uh, credit and customer experience, we put those three together. And as Tim mentioned at the top of the call, we can use these three things to increase sales. Absolutely. It increases transaction processing revenue. And it really increases your merchant's basket size. Now, all of the all of the stats that you'll read out in the market of you know 30, 40 percent increase in uh, average ticket size is absolutely true. And you know you can read that data from uh, independents, you can read it from uh, from the installment plan providers like us and and others in the market. And it's absolutely what we see. And uh, we've had some of our merchants uh, come to us with you know letting us know that they're seeing over 200 percent increase in basket size when they offer an installment plan or a buy now, pay later. So today we're going to talk about installment plans and buy now, pay later together. And I'm going to wrap it up in the phrase of kind of embedded credit and embedded finance. So if we kick over to the next slide. Everybody's feeling the pinch of increased in interest rates. Here in Canada, uh, we're already paying $5 for a loaf of bread and about $9 a gallon for gas. Those kind of macroeconomic factors are driving consumers 
to look for more and more embedded credit opportunities. Now, this embedded credit finance market is already already large. It's kind of $62 billion of revenue in that market. And it's growing it at about 35% CAGR. Um, it's going to top out uh, in 2027. Uh, they're looking at nearly $200 billion market. So this is absolutely insane. Now, if we pair it back away from pure BNPL, this works and embedded credit works in all sorts of industries. So retail, absolutely. It is the first one that everybody goes to uh, for buy now, pay later. We also see services industries. We see retail, uh, we see uh, tourism, and we see salons. Uh, we're actually even seeing education providers come in now, uh, veterinary clinics, you name it. Everybody's looking for a way to tap into this consumer demand and ultimately drive more opportunity for consumers to pay at the point of sale. So the whole market is really driven by software. It's really driven by APIs and open banking. And what that means is when we're talking about software driving this, this puts software vendors, uh, like many of the people on this call today, in that driving seat and being an active force in increasing this consumer demand. Let's click to the next slide if we can. So bear with me here on this one. This is a, a model from McKinsey, but it's really important that we all get on the same page of the embedded credit market. So when we look at this graph here, we're gonna I'm gonna focus on the three three broad columns here. So at the bottom end of the ticket size, round about that, you know, sub 250, someone wants to go and buy a you know a t-shirt or a hundred dollar pair of jeans. These are integrated shopping apps. Once the consumer chooses. Uh, buy now, pay later at the retail stand, they're embedded into an integrated shopping app. Those apps control the consumer experience, they control the merchant experience, and they process all of the transactions through them. So that's fantastic, uh, particularly, you know, in a, in a very low uh, ticket size market, you know, that, as I say, the kind of $100 jeans. It's a great one for integrated shopping and off the consumer goes. As we move up into that kind of middle column there, so $250 to $3,000, and there's a few different brands in here and a couple of different uh, pieces, but really we're talking about this is installments that it can be paid uh, on card, so via credit card uh, or off card, which is really a bank account, ACH. So in these markets, and everybody knows of Peloton and those kind of you know fantastic kind of $3,000 uh, products, this is where the software vendor can control the user experience and look for opportunities that are agnostic to industry. And so this is where um, we see a lot of, you know, there's a lot of logos in there that people will know already, even down into kind of virtual rent to own. As we get up into these very large ticket size items, this is where we get vertically focused. This is where we're starting to see more embedded finance opportunities for very specific use cases. So for example, um, you know, if we're looking at um, tire and auto, you know, three thousand dollars to go and get new tires, uh, winter tires on the truck, for example, you know, these kind of things need to be directly embedded so that the consumer experience is very, very tightly aligned to the customer experience that the merchant wants to offer, and ultimately what the software brand wants to offer as well. So this is the market, and it's incredibly fragmented, and it's very, very hard but it is crucial for software brands to really understand the segment that works best for them and ultimately the solution that works best for the consumer because the consumer is the one that needs to click to pay and the consumer is the one that we need to focus on as needing that best credit experience. Sorry, Ryan, can I just quickly jump in? Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> something that we're also seeing with with a lot of the merchants uh, that, that we're kind of connecting with is is the credit market is also underrepresented because a lot of an increasing amount of merchants are actually offering terms on their own back. You know, so they're finding an experience that the consumer doesn't have the money to pay for those winter tires or to pay for that three thousand dollar purchase up front. And so in instead of losing the client, they're actually offering the terms themselves. And so they're they're almost just accepting that they're gonna get they're gonna get paid every month when when the when the consumer pays them. So so um more and more we're seeing that there's actually 
um, the more customers or the more consumers are demanding the ability to pay over time. Some merchants are just accepting accepting that they're going to have to offer installments on their own back and using their own system to manage that. And so a lot of the conversations that you have that we're seeing with merchants is not about whether they should be offering financing or, or installments. It's how are they offering it today and is there a better way? Yeah, that's right, Luke. And I think, you know, some of these installment plan uh, opportunities, uh, we were just talking to a, a merchant just recently, uh, putting through around about $20 million of volume through uh, their books on an annualized basis with four staff managing their installment plans because they were offering credit by themselves and running the recurring transaction by themselves. So fully non-integrated, huge opportunity there for those four additional head or for those four headcount to be redistributed uh, within that, that's just within that one merchant. So if you blow that out, if you're running an ISV, uh, you've got a portfolio of merchants. That's a lot of headcount that can be redistributed into that merchant and that uh, uh, in that business to grow. So absolutely great point, Luke. Thank you. Uh, we can go over to the next slide now. Okay, so we know that the demand is there. We know that uh, it's difficult, you know, as I mentioned, five dollars for a loaf of bread. We know that the market is hard. We know that there are a lot of different uh, models to installment plans and and buy now pay later. Really, because it's all being driven by software, this puts the people on this call, the software vendors in the market, the leading customer centric brands, in the driving seat. And so the way that you can get in there and actually offer installment plans and kind of ultimately grow your merchant's businesses is by owning the user experience. By offering embedded credit, you get to earn more of the economics of those transactions. And ultimately, the way to do this is to assess the end user demand, this is the consumer demand. So we're going to go to the next slide now. I just want to double click a little bit on this user experience. As a software brand, if user experience and customer experience is really important to you, then there's a decision to be to be made. Now, in this journey map, you can see here when a consumer goes to one of your merchants and wants to make a purchase using a credit tool, the decision for you to make as a software brand is to either keep those customers focused on your brand and your merchant's brand, or to have those customers go and uh, interact with another brand through a shopping app. Now, for the customer centric businesses out there, this is really important. This is a decision that needs to be made at the top of the decision tree. Who wants to control the, the consumer experience and that user experience? Every business is different. And so this is one of the inflection points that people on the call need to make as they're venturing into the embed embedded credit uh, market. OK, we'll go across to the next slide now if we can. So when you offer embedded credit, what you can do is you can own a lot more of the revenue. So on the left-hand side here, we've got kind of traditional BNPL. If you partner with a BNPL provider and you're pushing those um, consumers uh, off your brand, there's a chance that you'll get a BNPL revenue share at the top of that, uh, that table there. So there's a small piece of the pie there to be made. If you get fully into embedding finance and embedding credit, there is a lot more of that economic pie that can be owned by the ISV and by the merchant. So there's a BNPL revenue share, absolutely. There's also, because you're controlling the user experience, you've got the opportunity to control those fees and you can shape them by merchant category code, uh, you can shape them uh, by portfolio, uh, or if you've got some large franchises in there, you can even offer them a discount, um, you know, based on their own volume. And then, of course, if you're running it through yourselves, then you're also getting transaction processing revenue. And so you can see here, so offering embedded finance, it's critical to understand how much you want it to pay because this is, this is a project where you can own a small part of the pie uh, in one element or make that decision to own much more of the pie. And we definitely see both in the market. Uh, and it's important, as I say, for the brands on this call, uh, as you're working through how you want to stand up a project uh, project like this uh, to decide which part you want to do, and then you can get in and start owning more of the economic pie. Absolutely. OK, next slide, please. So now we understand that 
there's opportunity here to own more of the pie and we've got an inflection point to decide around uh, controlling the user experience. What we need to do is assess demand. Now, we've seen all different gamuts of how people are assessing demand out in the market for uh, BNPL and instalment plans. Some are asking chat GPT, uh, and so that's one way to go. Uh, and it's certainly something that we didn't see 12 months ago. Um, some are asking their merchants and asking the merchant, would you like to offer embedded finance? Uh, or uh, as uh, as one use case we heard the other day, would you like to offer buy now, pay later? And the merchant responded, I don't want to get paid later. So there's even an, a, a, an understanding there of what that BNPL market is and what that means to the merchant. But really, the best way to understand whether there is going to be consumer adoption is to go and ask the consumers. You need to understand those consumer demographics within your merchants. You need to understand the competitive set of what other payment instruments do those consumers have and would they like to use? And then ultimately, there's the macroeconomics piece, as I've touched on a few times. This is impacting everybody in recession. Uh, you don't have to uh, uh, read too many news outlets to see that that uh, credit impact is happening. So we put those three things together. We're assessing that consumer demand because the the demand for new payment methods is driven by the consumer. It's driven from the ground up. Now, I'm pretty sure that asking a merchant if they'd like their consumers to pay with their mobile phone uh, 10 years ago uh, was not the way to go. Uh, but now here we are uh, because all of the consumers are paying with their uh, Apple or Google wallet and it's because the consumer demand is there and it drives it up through the merchant and ultimately into the ISV. Next slide, uh, please. Ryan, just yeah. before, oh, before we move off on that slide, I think for me what is what's very interesting when you look at the, the better category of asking your merchants, um, a lot of the, the kind of conversations that you see with merchants is when you go to them with a, with a product, their, their first blocker is, is it going to cost me more, right? And so um, because because everyone's watching their margins, the consideration is always on, okay, well, you know, if, if it's not going to, if it's going to cost me more, I don't want it. But a lot of the conversations that we have with merchants is about reframing that conversation. So if, if a BNPL cost is going to be, you know, 5%, 8%, whatever you, whatever is set by you guys when, you, when you're reselling it, um, no one will, no one, you know, a 10% sale won't move the dial when it comes to promoting products and stuff like that. But offering BNPL absolutely does move the dial. So again, the initial conversation with merchants is going to be quite an interesting one because it's about trying to get them to understand that this is something that their consumers will, their, their behave, the behavior of their consumers will change and the behavior of the consumers will grow in terms of returning to the store and returning to, to kind of do repeat purchases. But if you stop it at the merchant level, then 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 the focus is on the increased cost that's on there. But if you look at the demographics, if you look at what the consumers are doing, they're voting with their feet and they're voting with their, you know, their dollars are following where they're able to make it stretch the longest. Absolutely. That's absolutely correct, Luke. Thank you. OK, next slide. This is a penultimate slide for us today. Um, what we've covered here is about the embedded finance product and buy now, pay later, and that inflection point uh, and that decision point that software brands have around owning the user experience. Do you want to own the user experience or are you happy to, use, to pass the user experience off to, to an integrated shopping app? We looked at earning more out of the economics. And so if you recall, there was that uh, small slide there. You can either own uh, some of the pie, or if you get into embedded credit, you can earn much more opportunities uh, or revenue streams uh, through that embedded finance product. And finally, as we've just touched on, assessing user demand, end user demand. This is really important. We need to make sure that we're talking to the consumers, because Luke just mentioned, consumers uh, are choosing merchants based on where they can get embedded credit products. Next slide, please. Now that wraps us up. Uh, this is, uh, we've got uh, five minutes left for, for questions. Uh, so I want to thank everybody for, uh, for joining the call today and for listening. Um, if customer experience is an important factor in your, your business, uh, then hopefully you've picked up something uh, and some uh, decision points and opportunities out of this, uh, this couple of slide presentation. So thank you. Back to you, Tim. All right. 
Um, does anyone have any questions from the group? I can unmute you. If so, raise your hand. And I don't believe we have any, so I'd like to thank. Uh, oh, we've I'd got like a question, to, Tom. Yes. Uh, I don't, yeah, I noticed a lot of BNPL companies are from Australia. Is there a reason? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I think uh, obviously, uh, first, my first response is uh, no. I don't think there was any kind of macroeconomic reason as to why BNPL started there, uh, or um, or BNPL um, became dominant there. Um, you know, obviously, Klarna is uh, Scandinavian, uh, and then we have some uh, some local kind of home homegrown brands here in North America as well. Um, but I don't think there's any kind of uh, technical uh, or macroeconomic reason uh, as to why uh, some have come from Australia. Okay. Well, Tom, what, you got another question? What do we need to begin the process? Sure. So I think the first step to uh, getting started with this process uh, is talk to our friends here at Till. Um, and so we are uh, we've got a very strong partnership with Till. Uh, and what we'll do is, you know, we'll jump on a call with uh, with your team, and we need to understand, you know, those decision points, and we just work it through. And then, if embedded finance is right, and something through Gratify is right, and whether that be branded Gratify or fully white label through APIs into your brand, then that's okay. And let's let's work through that together. So it really starts with reaching out to your contact at Till uh, and opening up those lines of communication. If, if I can just add to that, um, something that that uh, that we've really focused on at Gratify is speed to market. So um, we've built various go to market structures depending on the depth of the 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 sort of the tech stack that's that's with the partner um, and the availability of dev time. Because what we've seen is <laughs> dev time is at a premium everywhere, and so we do have a a no code go to market, which is literally a, a flick a switch and it takes a one sprint, which is less than two weeks. And it's ready to roll out. And then the idea there is, is it's it's a great way to sort of test it, work it out, see how it goes with your merchants. And then as you as you deepen, as you so sort of deepen the relationship with uh, with Till and Gratify, so you can deepen the integration with uh, sort of the the the, the API driven uh, white label and stuff like that. And just for me, the closing comment that I'd just like to say is is um, I like to talk about embedded finance, a, a approach to embedded finance uh, strategy being sort of protect and amplify. And the, the consumer demand is there. So merchants are going to look for the ability to offer some form of embedded finance. So through, through working with Till and Gratify, we give you the ability to offer, uh, to get ahead of that demand and to offer a, to offer a product which protects your, your revenue, protects your merchants from these other sort of payment providers. And then the, the flip side of that, or the, the, the benefit to you guys in addition, is the amplification side. As, as Ryan was saying, you see on average a 30, 30 to 40 percent increase in ticket size. And also you see a, 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 a if it's a hundred dollar purchase, it will go now to four twenty five dollar transactions, which, of course, increases your transaction count and your margin. So um, for me, it's a very exciting opportunity to be in. And it's 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 nascent, but it's 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 growing extremely fast, as Ryan was saying. We have Very good. Yep. So I think that's it for the questions. Ryan and team, thank you very much. And to our partners, we look forward to uh, continuing the conversation about Gratify and helping you get to greater revenue in a quicker period of time. So thank you all and happy holidays. Thanks, Okay. Wow. Thank you.